And then in chapter 10, he shifts gears into this, you get the scattering motif again of sowing seeds, and when you sow seeds in antiquity, you, you scatter them. And he's talking about Judah and Joseph, or we often refer to Ephraim specifically in this chapter, of being scattered and sown into all these, these parts of the world, but then at the great harvest of the latter days, that's when we gather them in and bring them back home into the, into the barn, or we might say back into the temple covenant connection and safety and protection of the Lord there in chapter 11, or chapter 10. Chapter 11 uses some symbolism of a shepherd. So we know God is the shepherd of Israel. God talks about how he will shepherd his people, and yet then there are other shepherds, the leaders of his people, who end up misleading the people. And God, we find this similarly in Ezekiel, calls out the shepherds, it is their job to protect and to properly lead. And when anybody's put into a position of leadership or influence or power, if they mislead people, if they take people away from God, that is on the leader. Good shepherds protect the flock and lead them to God instead of leading them away from God for their own consumption. And that's, that's the concern that Jesus has here is, are the leaders truly protecting the flock? And what I love is that we have leaders in the church today who are shepherds like the Good Shepherd. They, are, they did not choose these positions for their own power or aggrandizement. They do this because they are aligned to God and they want to follow the real shepherd, invite all of us to be shepherded by Jesus. You'll notice a, a, a beautiful connection in chapter 11 to the story of Jesus Christ in the New Testament. In verse 12 it says, And I said unto them, If ye think good, give me my price, and if not, forbear. So they weighed for my price thirty pieces of silver. And verse 13 says, And the Lord said unto me, Cast it unto the potter a goodly price that I was prized at of them. And I took the thirty pieces of silver and cast them to the potter in the house of the Lord. Um, isn't it fascinating that uh, Judas Iscariot is going to negotiate with the Sanhedrin, the leaders of the Jewish people, to betray Jesus into their hands, and the price that was set was thirty pieces of silver. And at the end, Judas is going to take those thirty coins, those thirty pieces of silver, and throw them down on the ground in the temple, and they the Sanhedrin says, we, we can't put this into the temple treasury because it's blood money, and so what did they end up doing? They ended up buying potter's filth, akaldama, a burial place for strangers. So you're seeing this, the, these connecting uh, words and, and amounts as a precursor to what's going to happen to Jesus, being weighed, so to speak, symbolically, and found, yeah, only 30 pieces of silver, and at the end of the day, we buy potters filled with those 30 pieces of silver. Yeah, in the ancient Middle Eastern context, uh, 30 pieces of silver was often proverbially used as a trivial, trifling, useless, worthless amount, and we might think it matters a lot today, 30 sounds like a lot, but the ancient proverb was, that's, that's worthless, and so you'd say, that's like 30 pieces of silver.